Hello everyone. So today we're going to be talking about chemical reactivity and mechanisms. So far in the course, we've been learning a different set of tools that are um, that are going to allow us to explore what is the essence of organic chemistry and those are the reactions. So organic chemistry is basically um, reactions, reactions, and um, we, uh, we study those reactions and that's what I um, told you the first day of class, that organic chemistry is the study of the reactions, the materials that we make with those reactions, and um, etc. So, um, I've been saying over and over that all that we need to do is to follow the, the flow of electrons. So, um, when we saw the first reaction that we saw, that was an acid base reaction, what we were looking for was for we were looking for our base to go and pick the proton, remember? So what we were studying was the flow of electrons, where our electrons were to and where they wanted to go. Um, and the next set of reactions that we saw, we saw the Lewis acids and Lewis bases, which are the same. And I talked to you about the nucleophiles and the electrophiles, remember? So the nucleophiles are species that are electron rich and they are always looking for electrophiles, electro, uh, electrophiles sorry, that are uh, molecules that are electron poor. So the flow of electrons will always go from where the electrons are to where the electrons want to be. Um, and so by knowing that and, and by recognizing the, the flow of electrons, you have a lot of the work done for this semester. So, um, and the other thing that uh, we're going to explore today and talk about is that um, we need to know where the electrons are and where they want to go, but we also need to realize and identify which are the, the bonds that are being broken. And remember that the bonds that are being broken, broken are going to be the weaker bonds, right? So if we have a CC bond, it's going to be hard to break because there is no um, electronegativity um, difference between these two. But when we have something like an OH, right? This is easier to break because remember that the oxygen is pulling the electrons towards itself. So this bond will be weaker, right? And so we will also learn how this reaction takes place. So if the reaction happens in one uh, at once, remember that we talk about um, a pool type of reaction, right? Where so you have a nucleophile that will attack, let's say um, here we have our electrophile, right? But once these attacks, then something has to go because remember that there are some cases where the carbon is already saturated. So imagine that I have a carbonyl here right, with an R and another R, and then I have a nucleophile that comes and attacks. Remember that this carbon already has four bonds, so something has to go. So this reaction happens in one step, but then we have other cases. So remember when we had these, right, these um, electrons could move first and then we would get the carbocation right here. And then at that point, my nucleophile could come and attack, right? So this reaction happened in one step and this reaction happened in two steps. So th those are some of the things that we're going to explore in this chapter. So in, uh, in organic chemistry, we write the reactions in a very specific way. So you know from general chemistry, this should be an arrow right here there we go. So you know from general chemistry that we usually say A plus B will give us C, right? Or C plus D, for example. So um, what it may be a little different here and you may have not seen before is that in organic chemistry, 
you will see the reagent um, to be to um, to show up here on top of your of your arrow and so you will you we have the reagent the arrow and then the other reagent here the reactive that we're going to use and then here we have the product right and then you're gonna see um, here right like there we have HV or a triangle so let me just uh, let, let's move on and I'll tell you what those means so in here we have the reagent and the reactive but in some other cases like this one right here we are gonna have instead of having the the compound and then the reagent right here we're gonna have the compound plus the reagent and then the product right and so these are the type of arrows that we're gonna use all the time those are two headed arrows some of the times you're gonna see extra um, extra things here underneath so HV stands for light right um, the triangle here this triangle that means that it's heat and then CCL4 that's my solvent right so even though you don't always have to know what the solvent for the reaction is you have to recognize that that's a solvent okay so you have to recognize uh, that that's a solvent and you should rec be able to read it so this should be uh, HV and this is a triangle right there so um, as I said uh, you should be able to recognize the what the reaction is trying to say you may have never seen this reaction before and that's okay this reaction is a Grignard reaction okay just for your information many of these reactions that we're going to see they have proper names they have uh, names of people because those were the people who recognize who um, did them first or who who found them first so this is a Grignard reaction and so you have to uh, realize that the overall change that you're going to see is that you go from a carbonyl to an alcohol right and so here we have the arrow and then we we see that this reaction happens in two steps how do I know that well I know because I see a one first and then I see a two before we didn't see this number so we could recognize that this was the um, the reagent and then below I had things like solvent but this is telling us that uh, this reaction happens in two steps okay let me show you um, how this happens and even though you've never seen a Grignard reaction you will be able to recognize what's happening here so let's do it so I have that carbonyl right there and the first step is they use CH3MGBr okay you've never seen that reagent but I, what I can tell you is that that is like if you had CH3 uh, with a minus right so remember that that is this right with a minus on the carbon that means that you have two extra electrons on the carbon remember the carbon is connected to one two three four five but it should be connected to four so that's why I have that minus in there just a quick reminder and so what happens here is that I have my electrons attack my electrophile so here is my nucleophile and here is my electrophile remember that carbon can only four form four bonds at a time great so something has to go and um, what it's easier to break is the pi bonds right a sigma bond like this one is hard to break but a pi bond like this one is easier to break so then these will come up remember that this oxygen already has two pair, pair of electrons great so the first step of this reaction right was to get that done so now I have an O minus then I have um, one methyl two methyls and then the CH3 that's connect, that connects so I end up with three methyls and now the second step was water right so what is water going to do here so remember that now here I have an excess of electrons and let me draw water in a different way so my excess of electrons is right there so this is going to now be my nucleophile and this is my electrophile or my so this is my base and this is my acid remember that water can uh, be both an acid or a base so my electrons come here 
and pick that hydrogen and then the electrons go to the oxygen. So what I end up with is with an alcohol, right? So this was my second step. Why is so important that this reaction happens in two steps? Okay, so if what happens at the beginning is that you mix your Grignard reagent with your water, let's see what would happen. If you mix CH3 plus the um, ketone plus the water, right? So that CH3 has a negative charge. The first thing that happened is not that this will come and attack there, is that this would come and grab a hydrogen and then you will end up with CH4 plus your starting material, uh, nothing has happened to it, plus OH minus. And so then the reaction that would happen is a complete different one than the one that we want to happen. So that's why this is important that first the CH3 minus attacks and then the water attacks. And um, so this second step where the water attacks, that's what we will often call the quenching um, step. And that is we quench the reagent and we stop the reaction at that point.